My name is Ruby Sahoda, and I'm the Liberal Member of Parliament for Brampton North. I ran for political office because I wanted to be a strong voice for my community. I wanted to advocate for those that couldn't advocate for themselves. Uh, I felt the Brampton community needed somebody who could communicate effectively and was somebody who was uh, of the community, that grew up in the community and knew them well. My proudest accomplishment is uh, a series of small accomplishments. Every time I'm able to help a family, um, you know, bring a loved one together or um, make sure that, you know, whatever challenges they may ha have in some casework that's overcome. Uh, and overall, the fact that I get to hear so many stories and meet so many people, I feel uh, my biggest ach achievement has been uh, to be accessible uh, from day one and I continue to make a lot of time to be a constituency MP and make myself available for anyone who wants to meet, for, meet with me. Um, and when I see that reflected back in, in comments I get from my community, that uh, feels like success. I'm motivated to go to work every morning because of my voters, my volunteers that believe so much in having good, effective um, representation. Uh, I'm motivated by my son who encourages me all the time. Uh, he's really excited about the work that I get to do in government and um, the world that he gets to view through the work that I do as well. So. Uh, I'm also motivated by a lot of young people that can now see themselves doing this type of work as well. So um, many people motivate me to get up and to keep continuing. Well, politics is often seen in a very negative light through movies and shows that we watch. And so one of the things that surprised me the most about politics uh, was that there's a lot of really great people in politics and I was extremely surprised more than probably any other workplace that I had worked in. The people that you meet here have such diverse uh, experiences and have good hearts. Many come into politics for you know really good reasons and that can be a little bit surprising because I was really preparing myself for you know uh, to to meet the characters that you end up seeing on a lot of those TV shows and although you know at times it could feel like that for the most part uh, I've never met so many good people in my life before. Well, uh, there's been many times in committees, uh, for instance, we get to work across party lines, um, but a particular instance would be um, a Conservative and NDP MP that I got to work with on the all-party entrepreneur caucus that was created by us in order to help um, small businesses elevate themselves, have a voice in Parliament, be able to raise their issues and concerns uh, to the government. and. Uh, it was a wonderful experience because we, we got to uh, come together. We all had very common goals and, and beliefs that we wanted to see small businesses su succeed in our communities. And so most of the time, uh, you know, members of parliament across party lines want to see the same kinds of um, progress and success in their communities. And so there are many shared goals and values that we have and we're able to work on those together. And, and I wouldn't say that's the only experience. There's been so many and on a daily there's something or another that we're able to um, share and learn from each other from or relate to each other for. And um, I, there's a lot of good experiences that we do end up having that aren't often seen on television or in question period. And so I would wouldn't hesitate to say that everyone that's up here has probably had some really good work experience with somebody from an opposing party. In my experience, the biggest challenge to democracy today is misinformation and disinformation. 
Um, I think it spreads faster and goes further. The impacts are greater than what we were used to seeing before. Um, in my 2015 campaign, I was just thinking about this earlier today, there was definitely an attempt to, you know, confuse or misinform the constituents by an opponent that I had by sending out letters uh, to households, you know, stating something, but a person would have to go through great lengths to confuse or misinform people. And today, the speed that it spreads at is extremely scary and, and the fact that people are not able to then verify or or easily verify um, or differentiate between what's true what's true and what's not true is really scary and I am constantly faced with that uh, day after day through the correspondence we receive through the constituents that I end up speaking to um, I feel like every time government uh, try to achieve something positive, there's always a, a negative spin or a misunderstanding of the legislation that's going into effect that ends up, you know, at the, uh, ends up in the minds of many constituents. And so to correct that narrative is getting more and more difficult at times because there's this distrust growing. As more misinformation, disinformation spreads, there's a greater distrust that people are starting to have. Uh, of their representatives, of their governments, and I really feel that this is the biggest threat to democracy today. Young people do give me hope. Uh, I do find that a lot of young people are able to, at times, differentiate between this. I have a youth council that oftentimes I feel grounds me and uh, when I feel a little down uh, because of the things that I'm hearing from a lot of of the voting age population. I try to bounce ideas off of my youth council and get their perspective on things. And I always find they come uh, with a very fresh perspective from a very honest, uh, truthful place because there's not too much, um, they're not self-motivated in ways that adults sometimes are because of the sector or that they work in or the benefit that they think that it might have for them, uh, a certain policy might have for them. I feel most young people will give me very honest advice despite the benefit it may have for them one day. And so I think, you know, the youth gives me a lot of hope. And uh, I hope that, you know, just like I'm sure many of my colleagues have said before me today, that we hope that the youth, you know, step into politics. A lot of oftentimes we see them hesitate to want to get involved in politics. So any way that I can encourage and motivate young people to get involved in one way or another in their communities with their political representatives so that their voices can be heard is one of the reasons I, I continue to do this job. So uh, I think it's a reciprocal relationship that we've built. You know, they motivate me to continue doing this job and uh, as a result, they motiv um, I'm motivated by, by them and, and vice versa. If I were to share a piece of advice for my 16-year-old self, it would be to get a mentor. Uh, I think a mentor can be extremely important in uh, avoiding missteps along the way, giving you the right advice. Uh, it used to be also a lot harder, and now I know that you know mentorship is is a lot more easier because you can reach out and connect with people from so many different walks of life. So I would tell my 16-year-old self still to find somebody that's doing something that you could see yourself doing one day and ask them the questions, get to know them better, uh, get them to help guide you in your future career. I think it can bring out a lot of potential and avoid a lot of heartbreak that um, young people go through in their 20s trying to discover what they, what they wanna do and how to get there.